The Justice Department officially charged Google with antitrust violations this week. The DOJ's complaint filed in federal court right here in D.C. states that Google aggressively uses its monopoly positions and money to shut down rivals and protect their monopolies. The specific issues that the DOJ references include Google's deals to position themselves as the default search engine on various browsers. Google's chief legal officer responded in a lawsuit saying it is, quote, deeply flawed. Here to weigh in is research director with the American Liberties Project, Matt Stiller, Great friend of the show. Great to see you, Matt. Thanks for having me. So what is the Justice Department arguing here? They're arguing that, that Google did something that it's essentially it's a carbon copy of the complaint against Microsoft in the late 1990s. Hmm. So Microsoft bundled Internet Explorer with Windows and then paid off a whole bunch of, of computer manufacturers to put Internet Explorer and not Netscape on their, their uh, preloaded on their computers. Here they're saying that Google did the same thing except with search. So Google does it through, they, they control mobile phone operating system, Android, they control Chrome, and they preload search as the default. They also pay a bunch of mobile phone operators. They pay groups like Mozilla to just stick Google on there. And that way they prevent any rival search engines from getting in front of consumers. So one thing that the government would have to prove here is some type of consumer harm. And I think Google probably says, look, our searches are free. So that's great for consumers. What's the problem here? Yeah, well, the, th that is, that's sort of the, one of the ways to read the laws. You could say, well, we have to prove consumer harm. There are other things you could prove that there's a loss of innovation. So in the Microsoft case, they made an innovation claim as well. You can claim that here. But, you know, look, the, the consumer harm is not actually hard to prove. You just show that search results are not necessarily as relevant as they could be otherwise. And also you can show that Google's, uh, you know, now when you Google, you get like four ads up top and you have to scroll down just to get any organic results. That's clearly like the quality of Google search is worse than it was. And that's because they have market power. And then could you also speak to the timing here? It's not no accident that this is coming from Attorney General Bill Barr mere days before an election. Um, what is the thinking behind that timing and what is the potential impact of that? Well, Barr probably just wants to get the suit out before he's no longer in charge. I mean, that's just the, the gist of it. This is the most interesting thing happening in the administration. It's not partisan. And Bill Barr, he's not acting just like a, this is not a partisan, you know, cheap shot. Um, there probably is a little bit of electoral ramifications here, or at least he might think that. But largely, it's just, I want to get this out before the Biden people come in and try to squash it. That's kind of my guess is what he's thinking. And so if the government were to ultimately prevail here, what would the remedy look like? What would they force Google to do? Well, first of all, it's important to know this is a huge deal. Like ideologically, politically, this is massive, right? It's the you got the Trump administration, a right wing Republican administration trying to break up a trillion dollar company. That is a huge deal. Just we haven't seen that in decades. This is the most important thing happening in terms of government policy towards the economy uh, this year and maybe for the last uh, 40 years, at least in terms of, of corporate power. Uh, so I just want to get that on the table because it's like this is and it's a huge progressive victory and we shouldn't forget that. Um, so what, they're gonna, what they probably ask for is they probably ask for Google to spin off Chrome, maybe spin off Android to kind of separate much of the search business from the search engine. And that way there won't be conflicts of interest. They'll also ask them to stop these anti-competitive practices like, say, paying Apple to preload Google search on the Safari and the iPhone. They pay about 12 to 15 billion dollars a year. So it's stop all of that nonsense and then let rival search engines actually get a chance at competing. What is the Biden administration, if we do end up with a Joe Biden administration, which looks likely at this point, what is their posture towards this suit likely to be? I think they're probably going to be, um, they're going to take it over. They're going to bring keep, keep it the same or make it a little stronger. You have other, you have state attorney generals working on this too. So you have Democrats like Letitia James in New York. She's bringing her own Google suit. And you got Ken Paxton in Texas bringing a Google suit. They're all going to get consolidated. So I don't think you're going to see um, Biden try to squash this. It's just there's too much momentum behind it. Congress likes it. Democratic state attorney generals like it. So he's going to keep bringing it forward and probably make it bigger. I think he'll be more aggressive than Trump, but it's hard to know because who knows what Biden's going to do on anything. <laughs> Very good point. Um, what do court watchers think is the likelihood of success here for the government? I mean, I, th I think it's a pretty solid claim. The thing about antitrust law is that it's super confusing and weird and essentially 
arbitrary. It's not really law. It's just whatever a judge happens to think that day when they get up uh, and eat breakfast. So, you know, d depending on the judge they're assigned, they got just got assigned a judge who was appointed by Obama. So that's probably a pretty good sign for the government. Uh, but, you know, it, it's the claim. All of the case law is super confusing and weird. I think it's a political thing. I think that that it's impossible to look at Google and say these guys are not a monopoly. So the, I, from from my perspective, it looks pretty good for the government. I also think that we're probably going to see legislative action. We may see legislative action before the case even concludes. So you could have the regulators or you could have Congress actually weigh in and say, we're just going to pass a law breaking these guys up, or we're going to pass a law that's going to make it much harder for them to do what they're doing. And I think that's likely impossible as well. That's interesting. And then final question for you, is this a type of issue that you would expect to potentially um, go before the Supreme Court? What do you know about, you know, how ACB might be positioned to rule on such a thing and the other members of the court as well? Yeah, I think that, you know, it's interesting. There was a back and forth between ACB and Josh Hawley about this question. So Clarence Thomas uh, last week came out with a statement on Section 230, which is an Internet policy framework. And he said, I don't like this concentration of power among these large monopolies, which is a very unusual thing for a Supreme mm. Court justice to do. And Josh Hawley and ACB went back and forth on antitrust. Uh, Klobuchar and ACB went back and forth on antitrust. So it's becoming more meaningful. That said, the Republicans on the court are pretty hostile to anyone bringing an antitrust claim. The Democrats used to be, and then they decided to switch over a few years ago. So um, it, it, the the case law could be sort of a brick wall before an antitrust case against Google, uh, depending on how it goes. But I, you know, that's in, that's what, why you need Congress to come in and change the statute and say to the courts, you know, you've really misinterpreted. These laws, we're just going to overrule your precedents with new statute. You're seeing that happen in Congress. You're seeing New York State is, is thinking about doing that. So I think that it's, it's probably, you know, it probably will go to the Supreme Court um, and the Supreme Court, it will probably be hostile against it. But, um, but Congress is going to weigh in and then the intellectual environment is changing so rapidly that the Supreme Court might change their views. All right. I like your optimism. We'll see if the legislature actually decides to do their job on this one issue. Great to see you, Matt Stoller. Thank you. Hey, thanks for having me. Next on Rising, executive editor of the American Prospect, David Day, and he's going to share how our healthcare system failed his own grandmother and probably is going to fail yours too when Rising returns.